Need more memory. Where does Malik get memory from? Let's find out. C programs typically get their memory by calling malloc, and they release their memory by calling free when they're done. Malloc is like this magical fountain of memory, and it just keeps handing out memory whenever we ask for it. We just malloc 500, malloc 100, malloc 1000, we just, it just keeps handing us memory. But how does it work? In my last video, I talked about using strace to try to understand how software works, where you don't have the source code for it. And that's convenient, because that's sort of what we're trying to do today. So let's take a look at malloc by using strace. So let's start with a simple program. It allocates a bunch of memory in this loop. That's just to help you see what's going on. And then we're gonna run, we're gonna compile it. And then we're gonna run it using strace and we're gonna see what system calls it makes. Of course, you're gonna see all the libc stuff up at the top. What we care about is all the stuff down here at the bottom. You'll notice the write calls that printf uses to print stuff to standard out. You'll also notice some brk calls that don't happen every time through the loop, but they do happen sometimes. And in this case, brk is actually where the magic's happening. But before we dive into BRK, things are a little more complicated. And so, so what happens if I change my code so that I allocate bigger blocks? Let's say I'm trying to allocate five megabytes every time through the loop. Now we'll compile it again. And now when we run it through strace, you'll notice that the BRK calls are gone and they've been replaced every time through the loop with an mmap call. So now mmap is actually where the magic happens. Now I'm gonna focus on Linux in this video. Things are gonna vary a bit between operating systems. If you're using Windows, you're gonna use virtual alloc or virtual alloc X which are kind of like mmap and which we're not gonna talk about in this video. But brk and mmap are the main syscalls that are gonna be used for memory allocation on Linux and on other Unix-based operating systems. So let's look at how they work. First of all, a quick reminder about how memory is laid out for a process. You get the stack up here at the top, you have the code, the globals, and the heap down at the bottom. You have some libraries in the middle and a whole lot of space in between. The address space is huge. On a 64-bit machine, you can address more than 17 billion gigabytes of memory which of course is more memory than you have. And this is all part of a bigger topic, which is virtual memory. And virtual memory is too big of a topic to include today, but I do wanna just mention that it's out there. We'll try to get to it in a future video. But the relevant part for today is that the top of the heap is often called the program break. Okay, now I'm not sure why it's called that. I sometimes think maybe they should have called it the program cliff or the program line of doom. It marks the top of the heap. If you try to read and write memory below the program break, you're gonna be okay. If you try to read and write the memory that's right above the program break, you're probably gonna cycle. So moving the program break up allocates more memory. Moving the program break down deallocates memory. Um, you're basically expanding or shrinking the heap. And that's what BRK does. BRK essentially moves the program break. I guess BRK for break. Anyway, you're moving the program break with BRK. There's also SBRK, which is really just a wrapper around BRK, which allows you, rather than specifying a new address for the program break, it allows you to specify an increment. It allows you to say, move the program break up by a certain amount of memory or down by a certain amount of memory. Here's a quick example that uses SBRK. Now, this may be a little bit counterintuitive because SBRK actually returns the address of the previous break. So it's gonna move the break by some amount, but it's gonna return you the address of where the break used to be. So when I say SBRK zero, that's basically saying, tell me where the break is. If I say SBRK 4096, that's saying move the program break up 4096 bytes and tell me where it used to be. Notice that I moved the program break up by 4K. I could have tried to move it up by less, but it's effectively the same thing. Because modern virtual memory systems use paging and the page size is 4K, and so I could try to move it up by 10 bytes, but effectively it gets rounded up to the next 4K page. Also notice that if I try to store something in the memory that's after the program break, like right here, which you'd never want want to do, but, but if I do, you notice that it doesn't need segfault. So what about mmap? mmap is similar in that it requests memory from the kernel. It basically says I need more memory in my address space to be usable. But rather than just allowing you to bump up or down the program break, it gives you more options. The best way to introduce you to mmap is just to show you an example. So here is one. This is probably the simplest mmap example I could come up with. And it maps two pages of memory and it prints out the address of those pages. You'll notice that mmap takes a number of different arguments. Let's go through what they are. The first one is a hint. I specified null because I don't really care where it puts the memory. This this is basically my way of telling the operating system, just give me what, I just need memory, just put it anywhere. The second is the, is the size of the block that I wanna allocate. So I specified the page size as 4K. You can request sizes that are not multiples of 4K, but it doesn't really make any sense because you're gonna get a multiple of 4K one way or the other. And you notice I can specify protection, so I can actually say, I want this memory to be read-only or write-only. In this case, I want it to be readable and writable, but I could specify just one or the other. Then there's the map private and map anonymous flags, which essentially describe, they basically tell the kernel how we want the memory to be managed, how we want it to be shared. Do we want it to be shared at all, or do we want it to be private to a particular process? And then these last two are actually 
actually useful for memory mapped files. And that's something that I'm gonna save for a later day. Memory mapped file IO is really cool. I just don't have time to cover it today. So let's, let's change a few things here. First of all, let's say that I do care where the memory goes. If I care where the memory goes, I can specify a particular address as the hint. And you'll notice that it tries to satisfy that request. It tries to follow my hint, but blocks of memory are always gonna be aligned to the beginning of a page. And because pages are 4K, the bottom 12 bits are always gonna be zero. So in this case, it tried to follow my hint, but it wasn't quite able to. So, but it did give me the page that contains that address that I requested. So close enough. And of course I can map more than one page if I want. Like I can map four pages right here. And you notice the addresses are spread out a bit more because the first block is just bigger. And now just a little caution. I show you these functions because I want you to understand how it works. I want you to be able to see how memory allocators actually work. I want you to be able to see how they request memory from the kernel. Unless you're writing your own memory allocator, I don't recommend using BRK because it's used by the system's implementation of malloc. And so if you're not careful, you may be fighting with malloc and calloc and realloc and free, and that's a fight you're probably gonna lose. So if you're gonna use any of these, I recommend use mmap, which is a great option if you wanna write your own memory allocator, if you wanna do something custom, or if you just need a big block of memory and you think for some reason that you can do it better than malloc does, because then your memory allocator can coexist fairly nicely with the system allocator and it's not gonna cause problems. And so that's all I have for you today. MMAP and BRK, you don't use them a lot, but it's useful to know what they do and how they work, just in case you find yourself in a situation where you want a little more control than Mallet gives you. I have a lot of ideas for other virtual memory related videos that I'll make in the future, but for today, that's all. And until next time, I'll see you later.